After spending many years nerding out on major impact events that occurred on our planet in a distant past, it was only when I looked at things from a much broader lens that I began to understand just how minuscule the present day known craters on our planet really are. Granted, in its most primordial era, our planet also succumbed to the level of intense and massive bombardment that every other planet and moon in our solar system did. And according to the giant impact hypothesis, an ancient planet in the early solar system named Theia collided with the Earth. And if this hypothesis is actually true, this would have undoubtedly been the single most intense impact event that our planet has ever experienced by far. And it's thought that post-collision, the resulting ejecta gathered to form our moon. Though still a hypothesis, collisions like this definitely occurred on other planets and moons, and they're still out there for us to gaze upon today. But why do they still have the visible signs of major cataclysmic impact events, but Earth doesn't? Well, the difference between those planets and our one is the fact that our planet is constantly engaged in a process of recycling itself through active tectonic processes. According to a recent published study, our planet's ancient landscape is actually still located beneath the Earth, with scientists releasing a high-resolution map of the underlying geology beneath the Earth's southern hemisphere which revealed an ancient ocean floor that had been subducted eons ago. And they think it may be wrapped around the planet's core. This study revealed an incredibly detailed look into the astonishing fact that tectonic plates might survive the ending stages of a subduction event, and it appears that the plate itself doesn't actually become incinerated to the point of abolition, and that parts of it survive the event and become wrapped and tangled within the innermost parts of our planet, which absolutely blows my mind. It's like a graveyard for tectonic plates. But the same isn't true for virtually every other planetary object, at least to our present day knowledge. It appears that Earth is the only planet engaged in this tectonic process, and as a result of that, we have truly massive impact craters dotted all over the solar system. Like this one in Mercury, dubbed the Rembrandt Crater. With a size of 716 kilometers or 444 miles in diameter, it is so large that if it struck the Earth, it'd be larger than the countries of Spain and Portugal with a bit left over for good measure, slamming directly into the Earth. It makes the asteroid that took out the dinosaurs look like a baby in comparison, which for reference was only 180 kilometers in diameter. So with a size of 716 or 444 miles in diameter, the Rembrandt crater is almost four times larger than the Chicxulub one. If this hit the Earth today, even the most resilient organisms would struggle to survive. But what if I told you that this crater was but a baby compared to the ones coming up, as the next impact event formed a circular depression that was more than double this size, and it struck the very same planet, with it slamming down into Mercury at some point in a distant past. Caloris Planitia is Latin for heat. This massive impact structure has a diameter of 1550 kilometers or 963 miles. And if we were to compare the size of this crater to a section on Earth, this is how big it would be. Moving to Mars now, and we take another major leap in size, with Hellas Planitia standing out with an impressive diameter of 2300 kilometers or 1429 miles. The depth of this massive feature is 7,152 meters or 23,465 feet. Here's a topographic map of the crater taken from the Mars Global Surveyor. This impact literally twisted and mangled the planet, absolutely warping and deforming rocks near and far, along with propelling a truly astonishing amount of material out into space when this truly the stuff of nightmares asteroid impact occurred. Like damn. And as probably expected, it appears that the antipode to the point of the impact, meaning the point directly opposite to it, contains enormous shield volcanoes, situated on an area known as the Tharsis Bulge. Now, whilst it still hasn't been conclusively proven that an impact event can cause these types of volcanic events on the opposite side of the planet, I mean, come on, this vast volcanic plateau is centered directly opposite of the impact event, and there's so many instances of antipodal volcanic events occurring, including on Earth, that you can't help but feel somewhat compelled that the two are linked. Somewhat. And this is the area of land that this crater would take up if the rock that created this hit Earth. Sorry mates, it looks like we've met our ends here. Now we're heading back to our mate the Moon. The South Pole Aitken Basin is an immense impact crater on the far side of it, 
This astonishing feature sits at an incredible size of 2,500 kilometers or 1,600 miles in diameter. With a depth of between 6.2 and 8.2 kilometers or 3.9 to 5.1 miles, the topographical map of this is terrifying. The red represents high elevation and the purple represents low elevation. And check out the central uplift dome that occurred on this absolute monster of a crater. And unsurprisingly, this is one of the largest known impact craters to exist in our solar system. And if the rock that formed this hit the Earth right here around the Himalayan mountain range, this is what would be left. And we finish our journey at the largest known and confirmed impact site, Utopia Planitia. This beast is located on Mars and has an estimated diameter of 3,300 kilometers or 2,100 miles. There's a whole heap of interesting geological phenomenon associated with this impact event, with the crater containing a vast amount of underground ice that has a volume of water equivalent to what is found in Lake Superior in central North America. And speaking of North America, this is how big the crater would be if this rock struck our planet. Sorry to my Canadian and American subs out there, but if Australia's going, you're coming with us. And since South America was spared, well, at least from a direct impact, make sure you save the seeds to your coca plants because post-impact some white powder is definitely going to be needed to cheer up the somber mood that would exist on Earth. Which after this point would have been a gouged out hellhole that would resemble the Christian hell depicted in old paintings to the fullest extent. There are larger speculated impact sites, but this video was focused on the ones that have been proven. But if the other ones such as the North Polar Basin in Mars proved to actually be a crater, then that'd make it a whopping 10,600 kilometers or 6,550 miles in diameter. And that would truly be beyond mind blowing. Thanks for watching.